Um, yeah, yeah, it'll still be moving um, east, but it'll look like it's going 150 miles per hour east because it's, you know, you have the direction of the amount of speed of that first, the second train and the amount of speed of the first one with the girl on it. Um, so the next type of problem that we're going to talk about is a displacement problem. And um, these problems, when you look at them, they seem really, really easy. Um, and it's like, oh my God, why is she spending all this time on displacement and distance? Like, you know, I know how to add numbers up. But um, every time we do problems like this, they, um, students always get them wrong. And the reason is, is because um, a lot of times what they'll do is you see here, we've got the trips kind of like, um, I'll kind of explain it in a second, but what students typically will do is they'll kind of do this for their different steps. And so they'll get the displacement wrong or they'll um, they'll confuse displacement and direction. So um, basically um, in this situation, this blue part is supposed to be a building and um, the elevator is having several trips. And so each floor, is 10 meters apart. So each each one of these like spaces is 10 meters. Okay. So in trip one, um, the elevator is going from the third floor to the seventh floor. So like this would be 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters. Do you see that? Because it went um it went like four spaces. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Okay, great. Um, so that's going to be 40 meters. And then um, when it gets there, it's going to go back down to the first floor. So then we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So that'll be like 60 meters. And then from the first floor, it's going to go way up to the 12th floor. So I'm going to count spaces again. And um, for my third trip, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then we're going to go up to the 17th floor from there. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so 11 would be 110, sorry, 50 meters. And then we're going to go back down to the second floor. Okay, so um, I think this will be 16, but I'm going to count it because I don't want to make a mistake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. See, it's 15. I was wrong. Um, this is why I don't do math in my head. Um, and another thing while we're on this number line is um, I know it seems so, so easy to just like, um, you know, kind of try and do this math in your head, especially with these displacement things, because you don't want to bother drawing your number line and, you know, you got, you know, your test is timed and all that sort of stuff. But I have never, ever, ever gotten one of these problems right if I try and do it in my head and not draw the number line. So that could just be me being, you know, a terrible math person. But, um, you know, I've, I've taught physics for six or seven years and I've literally never gotten one of these problems right doing it in my head. So you might be better at math than me and, and you, a lot of you probably are, but I definitely have um, more experience doing these. And I can tell you that um, just draw the number line. I know it's annoying, but um, it will really help you get the right answer. So um, this one is asking us the distance, okay? So the distance is the total amount the elevator moved from the start of tri trip one to the end of trip four, okay? So um, trip one was 40 meters and trip two was 60 meters and trip three was 110 meters and trip four was 50, that's a really weird five. Um, so then it's, you're going to get 260 meters and that's your total distance. Okay. That's the total amount that you moved. Okay. So if they ask for distance, they want the total amount that you've moved from whatever trip or whatever, you know, there's the first one to the last one. Um, yeah, yeah, it will. And that's going to be important when we talk about displacement, but because we want to know the total distance it's moving. We're just going to call it 60. We've got to add them up because, because they, you know, um, if you did like a, a negative 60 here, it would take um, distance away and it would say it was 200, but it really did go 260. It, it, think about it. Like if you're running, you know, you don't want to like um, not like, for example, um, I like to run back and forth on my street. That's just what I do. 
um, because I don't have a lot of great places to run. And so I would hate for like my, um, my run, you know, if I ran to the end of my street and then I came back to my house, I would hate, like, you know, I, I would still count the distance I ran back to my house, even though I was going back technically backwards, if that makes sense. And you know, I don't run backwards. Um, but that's going to be important when we talk about displacement. So like this next one is a displacement question. And so for example, um, let's say my street is like half a mile. If I run to the end of my street and run back, that would be a, a mile would be the total distance I ran. And that would be, you know, what my fitness tracker or whatever says. Um, but if I wanted to know my displacement, which is, I'm so glad fitness trackers do not do displacement because it would really you know, defeat my motivation. But if I ran from my house to the end of the street and then back to my house, my displacement would be zero. Um, because it's displacement is how far you are from where you started. And so that's where the, um, that's where that's going to really matter. So um, if we wanted the, the, the displacement from the start of trip one, which is here, to the end of trip four, which is here, we're going to want this distance, right? Um, so I can just kind of count these spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Does that make sense? The start of trip 1 to the end of trip 4, yeah. So that would be like 140 meters, okay? Now let's do um, a couple more like this. Um, so now we want the total displacement for the trip, okay? So we started here and we ended right here, right? So our total displacement was negative 10 meters. So that's where our, that's where our, um, our units are going to come in because we started on floor three and we ended in floor two. So even though we went like all this space, you know, all these different trips and, you know, wasted all this time going up and down at this elevator, we really only moved negative 10 meters. Okay. Now, and then it can ask you how much will the, uh, must the elevator go to get back to your initial position, right? So it would just need to go, you know, 10 meters. Does that make sense? How displacement is how far from where you started, but distance is like the total amount you traveled. 